Hello, my name is Mike Granary, and this is the third and final part of a series on OData and CSDL. This part will cover how OData clients are supported in Redfish. There are two support documents for OData that Redfish implements. These two resources must be available for OData clients to discover and understand a service. These are defined as the Redfish v1 dollar metadata and Redfish v1 OData resources. The dollar metadata document is used to describe to an OData client the schema is used by the service. The OData document is used as a starting point by an OData client for entering the service. The dollar metadata resource contains a list of all schema files and namespaces used by the service. It also contains the entity container definition for the implementation. Entity container is used by OData to describe the top level entry points for the services available. In Redfish, this shows the entry point for things like account service, session service, and chassis, which are all defined in the service root schema. The dollar metadata resource is used by OData clients to dynamically discover and build a data model for a given service. The dollar metadata resource is an XML document that is formatted like a schema file. For a given implementation, the document will consist of all schemas and services it supports, in addition to OEM schemas. A service may host the schema files locally so a client doesn't have to download them from an external source. As a general guideline, the document should include the namespaces referenced by the odata.type and odata.context properties in the service's responses. Including all schemas and namespaces is valid, but it's not necessary. The dollar metadata resource will also define the formal entity container definition of the service. Unless a service is using OEM extensions to the service root resource, this will just be a reference to the entity container called service container found within the service root schema. This is the sample metadata resource for the rack mount server example on the Redfish Developer Hub. This document is largely a set of references to different schemas supported by the rack mount server example. In this case, we see things like account service, chassis, and computer system. We can see that if we look at the account service inclusion, it's referencing the account service v102 namespace as well as the unversioned account service namespace. If we scroll down uh, later in the document, we see other things like uh, the message schema file, as well as the Redfish extensions schema file. These two schema files don't actually include an, any of the entity definitions used by the resources. Instead, these actually include um, different sets of terms that a service may embed in line within a response, such as the allowable values annotation term, which is used within the context of describing to a client the valid parameters that can be passed into a, a given action. In the data services section of the document, the service namespace is defined and it contains our entity container definition named service, and it extends upon the service root dot v100 dot service container definition. The OData service document contains a list of top level resources an OData client is able to access, including the reference URIs. The contents follow the OData container definition for the service. Entity containers can define constructs such as singletons, entity sets, action imports, and function imports for the service. However, Redfish only uses singletons within its definition. The base definition can be found in service root.xml. Each item that can be found in the service root resource is part of the entity container definition. So this is the service root schema file. If we scroll down into the v100 namespace, we have our entity container definition called service container. 
And here we list out all the singletons that we put into the service root schema for v100, such as the service itself, the systems collection, the chassis collection, managers collection, and so on. And so these are all the top level services that can be included uh, by the OData entry point. This is the sample OData document resource for the rack mount server example on the Redfish Developer Hub. The resource is a JSON object that contains a single array called value. The array is a set of objects that contain the name of the element in the entity container, the kind of element in the entity container, and the URL for the service. So within this array, you'll see things like service, which is of type singleton, and the URL for the service itself is redfish v1. For other things like account service, it's named account service, it's also of type singleton, and its URL is redfish v1 account service. Responses from a service will always contain three OData specific inline annotations. At OData.context is used to describe the contents of the payload in reference to the dollar metadata resource. At OData.type is used to identify the specific type of definition of the payload. At OData.ID is used to identify the URI of the resource in that response. In this example of a response from a service for service root, the at OData.context property is set to redfish v1 dollar metadata hash service root dot service root. As a matter of convention, the unversioned entity of the resource is used after the hash in the context data. The at OData.ID property is set to redfish v1 which is the URI the client used in, to get this payload. The at odata.type property is set to hash service root dot v111 dot service root, meaning that the response follows the service root entity definition in the service root dot v111 namespace. That's all for odata client support in Redfish. For more information, you can reference the Redfish standards page, the Redfish developer hub, or get involved and join the SPMF. Thank you for watching.